That means we're here. That means we're live. Hello, everybody. This is Hunter Pascal, and it's Foreclosure Friday. Do I got a special guest for you today? As always, uh, you know, we've been doing these uh, Foreclosure Fridays for, we're trying to figure out exactly how long. We know it's over two years, and uh, we've had some great, great audience. We had some great, great participants, and we've shown some great real estate deals. We've talked about the market. We talked about the economy. We talked about uh pre-qualifying letters you know pre-qualified letters from uh lenders and uh from your real estate agents just like a roll of toilet paper and we talked about lack of having toilet paper i never ran out of my toilet paper so i didn't have to use this mm -hmm. i made this toilet paper roll uh in training i think willie remembers it probably uh back when when we got going and uh today i want to bring you this guy is just phenomenal he's so smart he's young he's in the millennium stage i guess because he just told me a little bit about how old he was when he got into this and i'm gonna let him tell his story about it a little bit about how we got introduced to each other uh what we're doing together today uh i'm learning from him basically it's you know uh, uh student becomes teacher you know and that's how it happens sometimes you know you you're in a niche and you're in a business and and then uh others go off and do things they want to do and get into things that you know they uh, they come out and crypto is one of them that uh, Willie's got into and I tell you man he's just phenomenal at it I've been watching learning and uh, only wish I'd have took some more of his suggestions when he gave them to me you know how students are you know the 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 teacher will appear when the student is ready but you know I've asked questions I ask a lot of questions that's kind of probably why I'm where I'm at today because I'm a question guy. I want to know the answers. I want to know details. I want to know how it works, how it doesn't work, you know, if it's working, if it's not working. And that's why, you know, I have all these people that I surround myself with that are positive, number one, that are motivated, number two, that are extremely high educated in the field that they're in and or, or the field that I am in. And uh, this guy here, Willie, he's in the field of everything, uh, consuming real estate, crypto, and a few other things we'll let him talk about if he, if he, if he wants to talk about those. But uh, I want to introduce you today to Willie, my man. Willie, how are you doing today, man? How are you, Hunter? And it's an honor to be here. Uh, you know, I feel like we're doing a podcast. I'm not sure. I'm just here for you and pretty much just share a little bit about myself. But I'd like to kind of just take off a piece of what you said first. Um, well, first, I, I just actually bumped into a video explaining that I'm actually considered uh, Gen X or an elder millennial. So, oh, oh so yeah, there's a I, different millennial. Yeah, because, uh, you know, I still got exposed. I mean, we still had to deal with phone lines and stuff like that. So landlines. So at, at the end of the day, <laughs> rotary phones. I mean, I still was there for that. But I was also one of the early computer people that got their hands on computers at an early age. So I got the best of both worlds, uh, best of the boomers and best of the millennials. So I, I kind of like that, very blessed for that. Uh, the other thing also is I like what you said. You know, one of the biggest things that got me going in life is I have to always hold by, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. And that's exactly what you were saying. And there's moments where I have to surround myself with people that are just smarter than me because I want them to challenge my mind. I want them to challenge how I think because, you know, when you feel like you're always right, you ain't going to learn anymore. You're just not. You know, you got to leave a little extra cushioning for, hey, you know something? There's more that I, you know, remove that ego and say, hey, there's more I can learn. And when you spend that time and dedication and passion, which leads a little bit about me, uh, today I'm a macro trader you know, for cryptocurrency in the space. But at the same time, I've always done real estate. I've been doing real estate, started my career in real estate 16 years ago at the age of 20. Mm -hmm. I only had $5,000 in my pocket, uh, but I was so determined after reading the, uh, the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I'm sure everybody that has been doing real estate for years have, you know, heard of that book. And I read it around college, but it was the biggest turning point in my entire life. I basically dropped out of college at that point and I said, you know something, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get a real estate deal on, you know, no matter how long it takes. And just a few years after my first deal, as I met Hunter and, you know, I was one of his first students before he officially started doing these big seminars and officially teaching. And all I have to say is, you know, thank you for that, for being my you teacher. Are, you are <laughs> welcome, man, because I know you guys were hungry. Uh, you had a partner then. 
uh, I believe it was two of you there, and you both came on board. And I said, man, these are a couple of young guys. And, and you got right in before uh, – that was in 2006, right, uh, you said? So uh, I think 2000 either – five or six okay so we started the coaching started meeting up my partner around then and you guys kind of reached out and and had, had had mentioned i had mentioned on stage speaking at the other events mentioned on stage i was going to start doing some trainings and uh and i really didn't even have it set up or what i was going to do but basically we did a lot of beta testing with you guys and how was that beta testing time was that okay i think you were a lot tougher on us than your most of your <laughs> students i felt like man why is he so tough on us but i think you were trying to shake us up a little bit and i and i think it was a good thing because there was a, a part of me that was like i don't think he's taking us serious and that helped spark up uh i was like you know something let's let's get his attention and we did you know we we wanted to show you that we were beyond serious we were starving you know and that and that was it and finally uh, uh we earned your respect and more importantly your friendship and, and that was led to a lot of other things. That's what led to my opportunities, many other uh, other opportunities in life. Because, you know, when you guys, when I met you guys, uh, you know, you meet a lot of people in the real estate field. And you know, when I'm speaking and teaching and people say, hey, I want to do it, I want to do it, you know. And and uh, then you say, okay, let's open up your checkbook and see how bad you want to do it. Then they don't want to do it no more. And the reason that happened was because my wife told me, hey, you got to quit teaching people for free. You can't keep giving all your advice and all your experience to free because she found out when I did it for free, nothing happened. Nobody yep. did anything. You know, I'd, they'd call me. I'd spend hours and hours on the phone and because we didn't have the Zoom stuff and all the other video. Might have had some video back then with uh, Syl and Judy that I had on a couple weeks ago. But, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't enough to get people – excited about it because they had nothing they didn't have any skin in the game and when you True. guys came uh you you did you guys put some skin in the game because you had to do a few deals to to get yeah <laughs> well basically it was a referral kind of sort of and uh because the program wasn't cheap right i mean it was what twenty thousand dollars right so I, I think we may have paid more than that for the fact that the first few deals we we really gave you a lot and but there's no regrets because it made us work harder because we knew hey don't take your sweet time if we can get past those three we can start getting paid we looked at it from that point of view so we were pay basically saying hey let's pay our dues let's get his attention and then just let him know that we're very serious so you're telling me you had to do three deals for free, and then after that you got into the to the training. So again, twenty thousand dollars is a pretty good number to come up with out of pocket. And if you that, guys that have wish it. you offered me that, I mean, it, it, <laughs> you just it, said you only had five grand. <laughs> Whatever it was, it worked. It worked out. We're still friends. We're still actually. You did a deal what a year ago with me? Uh, was it been a year ago now? Yeah, I lost your audio. Yes. Okay. So, so yeah. And, and I, I remember that, uh, you know, it was the team and uh, you guys are really uh, excited about the business. And uh, I think y'all did very, I don't think, I know you guys did very, very well. Uh, went on to do your own stuff. I mean, yeah, I, look, I taught you so well, you could leave me and do all your deals for on yourself and you didn't need us anymore. So that's how good it was. The birds had to leave the nest eventually. You know that. <laughs> you know that. Yeah, so so today it's a little different, you know. Uh, people aren't doing the negotiations like you guys did, you know, and are still doing. And and basically, you know, it was just a really uh, a compliment, you know. And I appreciate you coming on today, number one, Willie, because I know you're a busy guy. I know you said you know Fridays are fun. For, you said fun Friday, I think you said because you get everything ready, ready for the next week, so you're already advanced. You know, and if people are on here, this is a good thing. It's good for me to learn this. I mean, you know, he shared something with me today just a little bit ago that, you know, hey, man, that's a great idea. It's not that we don't get ready for the following week. You 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 want to try to finish up what you're doing in this week and plan ahead so you can have more momentum for the next week. Is that kind of what you do? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, a man with no, you know, plan is a man with no future. I mean, that's just a famous quote. Don't know who said that, but. It's always good to plan ahead. You're not going to get it perfect, but it's good to try to at least show that attempt, you know. And with that, that would lead to one thing to another. It's just a natural reaction of life. 
So the deals that we did back in the day, those were all short sales? Is that pretty much? Well, the first deals that we did were subject twos, actually. Yeah. Uh, and that's when those were actually becoming popular. Well, they are popular now. Uh, but then we were, uh, the market was changing to a short, uh, short sale market. And we were just like, okay, this is where it's heading before the realtors even knew what a short sale was. So no, you didn't find realtors that knew how to do any of this stuff. But the minute they were starting to catch up, it was getting to the point where, man, this is it. This is where the bread and butter is. This is where you get the deals and you get the most amount of meat, you know, on the bone. And those were good because subject to sometimes, you know, you got to negotiate and you may not get what you want, but a deal's a deal, right? Yeah. And also, I remember back then, I remember you talking about the realtors. Uh, I remember Channel 9 coming to my office back then. I don't remember exactly the year, somewhere around uh, 08, you know, when the crash was hitting the market, you know, when the big short happened. Uh, yeah. Basically, they were coming to my office and interviewing me and saying, hey, the realtor, the real estate industry, uh, you know, NAR, NAR, or not NAR, but uh, uh, real estate here in Orlando uh, said that, hey, there is no uh, that challenge. There are no challenges going on. I'm saying, hey, I'm getting a bunch of calls because people are behind on payments. They can't make their payments and they need help. And the realtors are saying, hell no, you don't have a problem. Well, I'm saying, yeah, you do have a problem. There is a big problem. And the big problem was, you know, the financial crisis. Then they found out finally, you know, they caught up, like you said, 60 months to a year. And none of them were experienced at this. And we've been doing it already, you know, since 2003. I mean, I mean I've been in the, the discounted paper and mortgages early on, you know, 1990s. I mean, in that era, late 90s, you know. And, and so being it being understanding the process just made us kind of segue in right into the big short sale process and it's been non-stop since and and so so what what did you learn from that experience from coaching i mean you you needed some kind of training there so what did you guys learn i mean i know i've seen you guys grow just blossom through that process well you know we we basically targeted you <laughs> the thing was is that we saw other teachers out there. Uh, I don't know if I've got a lot of name them here. Uh, you know, I don't know how. I, I don't care. You know me. I'm yeah. wide open, dude. Yeah. I, I, I it's just up to you. Me. It's up to you. I'm wide open. I, well, I, I mean, we looked well, into Jeff Collar at the time. We, we, we looked into so many within the CFRI group and all that stuff. But we knew that you were a trailblazer because you were actually more hands-on with the students and uh and uh, although you weren't deciding yet you were really getting into it and you were talking about it and we were like this is it Th this is what we're looking for because i don't want to be just a number you know you were you were more direct you know hand on hand one on one almost so it's to the point where that's it i'm willing to sacrifice my deals for you just to just to learn that hands on versus just giving me a giant book because the, the the book that i got from jeff collar was like <laughs> You know, it was like a Bible. I got you know a few I mean? of those. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not going to read all that. I'm a simple reader, you know. So, and, and not only that, but you can only go so far with book smart. Uh, we need that experience, and you give that. You give a lot of that. And, and that's, we got that other piece from you that we needed and we're lacking so bad. So we already knew about short sales. We needed that extra edge, coaching edge, and that came from you. Yeah. So, you didn't want to be that percentage when somebody's out speaking on the stage that you don't want to be that percentage or that number. Like you said, you didn't want to be another number or a percentage of a, how much could I sell? You wanted somebody who was actually doing the deals, not saying caller and them weren't doing the deals. I mean, I know they did, they did them, but uh, the way I felt, the way I teach, the way I still teach is it's all hands on. It's all, you know, get a little bit piece of the pie. There's no sense in giving you the big book because you're just going to get confused. You're going to get all combogulated, you know, and, and decide no we're not going to do it but what we, even today you'd be you'd be you you would be amazed and and you'd really like what we're doing today and it's teaching people like you know just how to locate leads and then once you get the leads then we move you to the next step it's just step by step by step and i think that's for me that's how i learned and i saw you guys that's how you guys learned back then so i knew that then that it would work and then you guys just flourished man you guys just took off and said okay we got this we got that and then, then you wanted to know about how to negotiate and all that. So you got to get with my negotiator, become, you know, understand that process. And then you guys went on, did your own deals yourself and, and, and did very, very well. 
And so, so what, what made you drift away from real estate? What, 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 what in your timeline? I mean, plus you've been, you were in real estate for quite some time. So, and not that you still aren't, but what kind of made you drift away from the real estate game? Well, I mean, it, it got to a point where, you know, I, I've always been a bit of a tech nerd when it came to a lot of things, but at the same time, a lot of, you know, I got really to a point where I'm like, okay, I made a good amount of money. I'm very blessed. I'm very thankful, uh, you know, that I met you and, and basically, you know, H, you know, the whole, the whole office, you know, everyone in there. But, you know, there was one of those things I was like, all right, where do I go from here? Do I want to do this forever? Do I want to maybe expand or how, what do I do? And I wouldn't be able to have that mindset if I didn't reach a certain amount of capital. And when I got to a point, and that's what real estate got to me, because, you know, when you're, you know, like the rich that poor that says you're in a rat race. And when you're very stuck in that rat race, I mean, five grand, you know, it's kind of hard to do things with five grand, especially today. Yeah. But same time as long as you have ambition and I felt real estate was that you know the catalyst to get me to the next higher platform and then from there I, I got into Bitcoin and just to give everyone an idea uh, when I you know bought it the prices of Bitcoin at the time I bought it at $800 but it was fluctuating from $200 to $800 at the time and that's pretty cheap very very cheap I mean today I mean right now the price of Bitcoin is 11,513 cents <clears throat> Plus, real estate gave me experience on just looking at numbers, kind of understanding, especially when you got to learn how to read the HUD a little bit. You know, it, it got me so technical to the point where I started digging into Bitcoin. I'm like, what's this all about? I want to learn this whole volatile market. And that led to just understanding blockchain. And the beauty about blockchain is that's basically what Bitcoin is running on. But that's just the technology. It doesn't mean it ends with just Bitcoin. It, this is going to be applied to the entire world. I'm talking about full circle, as we were talking before we started, you know, going live. It's 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 full circle now. It, we're looking at the blockchain and real estate fusing, marrying together, and the whole world is going to be using it. And this is exactly how everyone started to look at the internet. We're like, oh, you know, I'm I'm not going to use this email thing or or this internet. Blockchain is the next internet. You can't avoid it. It's unavoidable. And you may be using it without knowing that you're using it. And this is, and, you know, to my opinion, not financial advice, but this is going to be firmly the biggest wealth transfer that we're going to see in history. Uh, I think arguably people are calling it the fourth industrial revolution. Wow. Wow. So, so anybody that's on this call and they don't know what Bitcoin is or blockchain and all that, it's crypto. So the, uh, I don't know if you've heard of crypto you should have by now, if you're breathing in your life and you're above the age, you can understand a little bit of things. That's what it is. It's, uh, I mean, I got involved uh, with you guys. We actually created a training right before the, uh, the fallout of Bitcoin or crypto, supposedly not a fallout, but what you always call it is the readjust. You want yeah. to talk about the readjust a little bit? And, and what it's that a, well, it was in a high bubble. I mean, a lot of people bought at 20,000, 19,000 at the price of Bitcoin, but just like any market, it's a market cycle. And it's something that the euphoria that we all get from, you know, the emotions of making more money. I mean, we just, you know, a lot of people are not into market cycles and believe it or not, I mean, real estate has it too. And it's just a very slower market cycle. And if you time everything right, I mean, you make a lot of money. A lot. Of, I mean, Warren Buffett says you got to buy when there's blood on the streets. You know, when everyone runs away, that's the best time to buy. And when everyone is wanting to buy, man, that's the best time to sell. Mm -hmm. Yes, because, you know, I mean, you see it, we know it, you know it. And, and, and like right now, everybody's running. We're still buying. I mean, we've sold everything we can. We've had 29 closings since the uh, since announcement wow. of the 29 sales, not purchase. Not acquisitions, just sales. And oh, they got another half. <laughs> yeah, 29, 29 closing since uh, the pandemic hit. I mean, we had our last physical live training in my office, Mar the 1st of March, mm -hmm. and right the middle of March. I think it was March 13th or something like that this year. And then, and everybody was then thinking that we were closed down, we weren't going to be open for it because it was just being announced and rolled out about the virus. And, uh, you know, so people showed up, uh, about half the people showed that were supposed to come. And that was great because the people here got a good boost of what's happening. 
And uh, a lot of people joined our team in January, and that's why we did the March event. People are now asking, when are we going to do it again? Right now, it's all virtual. But so, so this blockchain, this uh, 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 crypto, Bitcoin, what, what, what is it that's so exciting you, to you about it? I mean, you, you, say, you said earlier it's going to be the next money. It's the big move, the switch, the change of money. So you're saying there's no going to be no more dollar bills, there's going to be no coins? or I mean, what, what is that? What does that mean? It's, it's, it's legally happening right now. And uh, here's the thing. Um, I'm going to try my best to make it as brief and simple as, like, simple, stupid as possible. Um, third grade. I, I need third grade level. Yeah, I'm going to tone it down because it can get, I can go on and on and it can get technical. I know you can. So here's the thing. Uh, well, first and foremost, just to give you a little brief of what you just said, I'll, I'll take a bit of what you said first. I mean, it's going to be everywhere because of the fact that this virus, this pandemic, you know, when you look at paper money, and I don't know if you've seen it, but when you go to stores right now, they're saying there's a coin shortage. And they're saying you got to either pay with debit or credit card electronically or have exact change. Because the Federal Reserve is no longer providing enough, and they have a whatever excuse that why there's a coin shortage. But if you look at other countries, and this is all documented in other news, uh, very you know uh, legit news media that are reporting that other countries are doing the same thing. They're going digital, and digital doesn't mean digital like oh my I have money in Bank of America right now. I can check on my app. I send money through Zelle and PayPal. That's not the same digital. It's going to get blockchain, which is a whole different story. And it's going to save people a lot more money. It's going to be fast because look at the stimulus checks. A lot of people still haven't received it yet, you know. And at the same time, uh, the the you're looking at a 40 year old system that is just too slow. And we and people need money now, like now, like this very second. And with blockchain, they've already approved and have it pretty much tested that someone can send 200 million dollars. Well, that's something Bitcoin can struggle doing. It can take you a few hours, but these other digital assets can send you $200 million in less than 30 seconds for 22 cents. Wow. That's, that's the fee, 22 cents. I mean, you got to look at liquidity. You got to look at the power of liquidity. And they're, they actually announced it yesterday, a new app that the Federal Reserve has already named it FedNow. And Fed FedNow? Fed now, and it's going to be an app. It's an instant payment app that allows everyone to collect their stimulus checks, and that's it. It's they haven't said what is running this technology, but my guess is blockchain. And they already, the Senate, Congress, they've already approved over 32 crypto laws, and one of the big ones was uh, uh, the, I think it was the the Federal Treasury, the U.S. Treasury. Uh, uh, already signed and approved that all U.S. banks in the United States can now legally hold all cryptocurrency from Bitcoin to any XYZ coin uh, as custodian. What would they do? And that's because right now we're looking at a lot of things. And one of the biggest things that Robert Kiyosaki says is you want to own property. You want to own real assets that goes from real estate, gold, silver, and they're saying that baby boomers are the ones who love gold and real estate and millennials are going after the more accessible for theirs as a, a hard, they're considered a, a hard asset Bitcoin, a blockchain coin, because they can only, there's only 21 million coin versus the dollar. They print as much as they want, trillions and trillions of their printing. And then we're going to eventually you know, have a, a weaker dollar. That's happening already right now. Last week, our, our GDP fell by 32%. That's a lot. And that's the most we've seen in history. So we're living in a very interesting time. But at the same time, this pandemic had basically launched this new, like gave it a, a big boost in this digital era and saying, hey, your money's dirty. There's a, there's a chance they're going to announce that the reason why the virus is still circulating is all this paper money and the germs are transferring to that. Other countries are already saying that. So it's to the point where they want everyone to adapt to this cashless money system and think about that, which leads to real estate too, what they're going to do with real estate and the blockchain. Uh, let's say stocks are liquid, right? The beauty about stocks is you can liquidate your shares, 
withdraw, uh, withdraw it. It's in your bank account within about, depending on your service, you can wire your own money back within a day. But real estate, you have to take, what, three weeks to a month, the quickest closing you can do, you know, it's illiquid. But the, what about if you can tokenize, uh, let's say a three bedroom, two bath that's worth $250,000. But we said, hey, you know something, let's turn, uh, we have this company, XYZ coin company is going to take over. They're going to blockchain it. It's going to be QR code. It's going to be in the system. No one can hack it. It's completely, uh, you know, open to the public. It's going to be easier to sell, but we're going to make a hundred shares. And that's going to be basically $2,500 per share. Okay. Rather than, Hey, I don't want to sell the whole entire house. I appreciate, uh, you know, I appreciate it. I just want to sell like maybe 30% of my shares. Now you can liquidate that into a platform that's going to act like a stock market. And you're basically now liquidating real assets, real life assets that normally you couldn't do. And the person that ha says, Hey, I can't afford $250,000 and I got bad credit, but I have cash. They can buy at least one share. They can still claim, Hey, I own a piece of real estate, even though it's one uh, fraction of it, you know, it's still part is still somewhere. Cause you know, let's say appreciates to 500,000. It's possible with real estate. You've seen things double, triple in value. Now that one share is $5,000. You just got a hundred percent return of investment off of just one holding, you know, and, and think about that, how you're going to be able to liquidate that uh, expenses, taxes, insurance, you're sharing out, let's say a hundred shares, you're spreading the cost a hundred ways. So that way you're not having, because people don't realize when you own property, you know, there, there's, there's a little bit of work in there on maintenance. You know, people don't realize, Hey, you want to play monopoly. You know, you better, you better really, really be tough skin because, you know, there, there's a lot, of, a lot of things that happen in a house. The house doesn't just take care of itself, you know? That's so that's, right. that's, that's right. So, so, yeah. so with that, so you're saying that, you're saying that, I mean, we already know there's a company out there. It's already transferred some property through Bitcoin. And that was a couple of years ago. Yeah. Uh, what was it I've called? Prop. prop um, Prop, I think it was prop. I know what it is. It's called um, P R O P something. Prop something. But it was a. Uh, I wish I'd have wrote that down. I didn't write it down. But that was years ago. As we were looking at it, they they did one transfer somewhere in Connecticut or somewhere upstate or like that. In Vermont. In Vermont. So there was a and there's another one now called. I mean, there's another one. Uh, a system or or companies or. Yeah, I mean, there's more to be exact. Uh, here's the thing. I'm not going to want to give financial advice and this is not, this is just an opinion based on my observation and my experience. But at the same time, I want to tell people that be careful. There's a lot of coins out there and, and, you know, usually like, let's say, Hey, I found this real estate coin. I'm going all in. Don't do that. You know, there, you, you're going to lose your money if you just go in like that. Uh, there's always competition. And right now the space is still early, but at the same time, you don't want to invest where, let's say, six coins are trying to do this. Uh, you're going to want to invest the ones that come out on top from that little battle that they're going to do because there's a few of them that's doing it now. There's already proof of concepts. They already did a deal in Vermont. Um, and here's the thing. For, for anybody out there that doesn't understand what blockchain is, uh, blockchain in a nutshell is basically distributed ledger. It's basically data recorded in these blocks in a system like if it's in the Internet, but it's unhackable. It's completely like authentic proof to the point where, you know, this is going to eliminate the middleman. Like, let's say, for instance, title companies, we're still going to need them, but you're not going to need like, you know, how many, like 15 people in one office working on a file, you know, and let's say when title company has to pull like title uh, liens and whatever, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you got to dig them up from like 20, over 20 different sources, HOA, this and that. That's, that, that. that drags time alone. So even if you wanted to buy it out cash, you can't. So when you do this in one open source system where, let's say, all those information and documents are in the blockchain, first of all, if it's cheap to send $200 million and it's fast, imagine what you can do with other documents, other data. And it's going to be cost effective because that way let's say governments decide to adopt to this, to their system, it's a one-stop hub where your closing is going to be smooth, easy, and fast. I'm talking about 
you're interested in this property and there's a chance that you're going to close on the same exact day, clean title and everything. So, so, you know, I'm a lender. Now this brings up query for me. I'm a lender. And uh, so I'm going to have to figure out how to do blockchain lending then. Is that, is that something? I mean, you're saying people got to have blockchain. They got to have money in there to trade. You got to have coins. You got to have something, right? Yeah. You you have have yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, right now in the space, the most popular thing that is going to lead the next bull market in Bitcoin and all the cryptos, because the last time it was ICOs, which is uh, similar to an IPO. So you, you got early in this coin, you did the first seed rounds and whether the coin performed or not, that was basically like the dot com bubble where it was just a lot of hype. So you, you basically were sold on promises or fake promises. Today, no, we actually have proof of work. A lot of proof of things that are happening today that actually work. They're they're pilot testing everything. Uh, it's called decentralized finance, and you got big guys like Tim Draper, billionaire. This is the same guy that had invested in Twitter, one of the first early rounds in Twitter, Twitch, and sold them, sold billions, made billions, and he started his own actually. So that's a little freebie if anybody's interested in that, but it's not available unless you can find it. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, not advice. But the point is, is that imagine a pool where let's say, hey, I want to be a lender too, but I'm also a little guy. Rather than having a million dollars or two to be able to become this, even a hard lender, you can join a pool, a blockchain pool that grabs the whole thing and starts lending out, and you start collecting percentage on your crypto, and you get paid obviously in U.S. dollar crypto. So, and yes, they have US dollar crypto. So that way you can float and not have to come back in cash because you're not done doing your business yet. You just want to get out of the coins and you already made your percentage and they can range from 6% uh, annual uh, to, I mean, I've seen something crazy as 20%, but again, we're still in test pilot runs, but uh, they're lending out using real collateral like airplanes, boats. They're doing that right now. So they're blockchaining and they're grabbing someone appraising it and then they're going to grab all the data and the appraisal and put it into the blockchain and based on percentage and rules that they have on their platform they start lending out instantly like you're going to be getting loans done on the phone and it's just completely approved at that point and that and and think about real estate what better time to be in real estate where you know when I'm flipping a deal, it can take me, you know, three months because, you know, you got to buy, you got to fix it up, you got to sell, you got to put it on the market and closing, you know, you're looking at deals that can end in a week just because the liquidity, you're, you're increasing liquidity um, in all markets and that translates faster money, faster returns. And that increases also appreciation because when you increase liquidity, you're going to increase demand and you know you're going to see money sparking left and right so just uh i'm also looking at my bullet points by the way if you see my eyes kind of move around that's all right but, but yeah i i covered i'm covering a lot that a I lot didn't... you're covering a whole lot of stuff here so if anybody yeah. has got any questions for willie uh definitely uh get them on there i can look i figured out a way to look at this stuff look at their questions and stuff while we're going on a lot of people said uh one of our newest partners caleb said he goes i got a half of bitcoin so uh, I might have a half was what I spent when I bought. So, I mean, I got in, you gave me some training. Uh, we did, like I said, we did a little training together. And, uh, you know, it's really interesting how volatile this stuff is and how it's going. I'm still in, a, like I said, my wife, uh, at another, com another video uh, post we have here on Facebook that, you know, she kept saying, hey, you lost money, you lost money on that property, you lost money on that property. So no, I haven't lost money. I haven't sold it yet. So I haven't lost money if I haven't sold it, but I might have lost equity, you know. So kind of in the Bitcoin space, the crypto space, I mean, do you do you suggest people to go in and just dump a bunch of money in like I did in the beginning when, you know, it was all excited? And I mean, how, how do you, how would you uh, get somebody who was excited about crypto and wanted to learn a little bit about it? What, what would they do to start off in it? Uh, not that you have anything to sell or you're not teaching anything. You're just giving, you're just came on here as a good friend of mine uh known me since 2006 and we've been buddies ever since you know mm -hmm. and uh and i just wanted to bring some you know because this is where i've learned it from i mean when you and i even did a conference call with a 
friend of mine in the Philippines to try to monetize what we were going to do. So what would you give an ex example or something, you know, a small example of somebody that might want to look in this, where would they look? How would they get involved? Well, here's the thing. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I'm not wanting to be out there and uh, kind of like teach it as much anymore. I can give some advice here and there, but, uh, yeah. not finished, but the thing is, is that uh, right now regulatories have it. So just understand that one of the reasons why we had to stop is because uh, you had the FCC coming in. I mean, I was even trying to start like a YouTube channel. And once the FCC was going after even YouTubers, I was like, okay, it's getting, getting a little rough. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I look at people and say, look, you know, you don't, you want to treat this like you treat any investment. You don't want to go all in, never go on and uh, don't look at things as a get rich quick kind of thing. Cause you know, most things take time and patience. And if you don't have that kind of patience psychologically, then, you know, you got to stick to a path that gives you that pace that meets you. Uh, a lot of people can't handle the volatility and even stocks as well. So crypto is even more volatile than traditional stocks. I can tell you that. Uh, one of the things I tell people like, look, if you're trying to invest into the blockchain and cryptocurrency, look at it more like, okay, not, I'm not an expert on, econ you know, I'm not an economist, you know what I mean? But I do follow a lot of the best of the best, but I can tell you this, the Fed is printing a lot of money right now. We can't deny that. We're spending trillions and trillions and everyone's getting all this bailout money. Uh, uh, a lot of people that didn't want to go back to work because they have crazy unemployment to the point where they made more money unemployed than their jobs. So people are dodging their jobs. They're dodging their boss's calls. So when you look at a, be a monetary behavior of that sense, and it's only common sense, this is just common sense one-on-one -on -one, guys, like your dollar is being printed. We can print as much more. We used to be in the gold standard and the gold standard, we, the America used to only print money that we had based on the amount of gold and other countries followed the same way. But once we removed the gold standard, like in 1933, I think it was, uh, that's where ever since then, the dollar has been falling, but at the same time, when you look at Bitcoin and, and gold, or at least Bitcoin, there's only 21 million Bitcoins. And someone asked me just yesterday, so what's going to happen when all of them are mined? And I'm like, well, how am I going to get a Bitcoin if I haven't bought one yet? I'm like, well, that's if someone wants to sell it to you. That's the only way. Scarcity. There's value yeah. because there's no, there's demand is high and then there's no supply. So what are you going to do? And that goes with real estate as well. God made this nice, beautiful green earth. He ain't making any more. So buy real estate too. Cause once it gets very, I mean, look at California and New York, a lot of people are leaving there because of high taxes and it's overpopulated. You, you know, the, the numbers are even high over there. So th things are just, you're looking at a shift that we've never seen before. And this is one of the best times where, if you never bought gold, this is a good time to buy gold and you can't touch gold right now because it's actually really hard to get physical metal right now because not many people want to sell it. And if you do, it's premium. But then get into at least a little bit of a digital asset. Just, just put like a small 10% of what you have as investment money. So don't go all in and basically just hedge against basically our current monetary system. And that goes the same. So what's a good hedge? Real estate, gold, silver, cryptocurrencies. That's what I say. Uh, what about stocks? Yeah, you can make money off of stocks, but if the dollar goes down or anything happens with stocks and dollar, they go down together. You know, so people have to understand that a lot of things correlate with the stock market, but one thing you want to definitely protect your, your whole wealth is, you know, inflation. Some people want to say hyperinflation in the future. We may or may not face it theoretically, but at least inflation. And we all know inflation happens. What three percent uh, per year is the inflation rate? So technically, real estate should be going up in value by three percent. It does. Yeah. So I don't know if anyone thought about that. If you were holding property, no matter what bear market or bull market, it's going up three percent in the long macro scale from a from a zoom point of view. Right. And that's look at cryptocurrency. I don't look at it as a rich quick, you know, although, you know, it's, it's very generous to me, but at the same time, what I do is more trading anyone that wants to just invest in the long term, something to hedge against the current system, uh, 
hey, this is the time to buy a little bit, buy it when it's dipping, that's the best time, and then just hold on to it. It'll be something, trust me, in the next year, or even less than that. But it's going to be like that for the next, I mean, the digital era is not going away. I can yep. tell you that. It's not going to go away. Yeah, it got me excited when I saw you made six figures in a short period of time with uh, the blockchain, the, the crypto, and yeah. And I said, dang, man, because you did a study on it. Actually, did it. I mean, you did a, a not just a study, but you actually took charge. And, and it was right, right when uh, you, you actually announced, hey, I'm done with real estate. And I said, what? He said, yeah, I'm done with real estate. I said, no way, Willie. Come on. No way. And then, and then, you, showed me, then you showed me why. And I said, holy crap. You know, I'm not going to announce how much money you made. It was, you know, six figure. But. It, it, it was just unbelievable. I'm saying, holy crap, I need, that's when I said, I'm following Willie. And that, that's, you know, but unfortunately, there's just almost so much time in the day. And, uh, and, and he did, Willie helped me a lot. And I did some things and got, I mean, I'm, I'm, I think I'm safe, you know, I'll be all right. That's what you keep telling me. Hey, you're not a trader. So there's, oh, tell me about the three different types. Tell me about the three different types of crypto people or crypto uh, let me see here. Oh, you said trader full time. Yeah, that was, that was from the seminar that we did. That's right. <laughs> I, 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 I well, you now. said there's only going to be three kinds. You said they're going to be people like you, Hunter, that just throw the money in there and it's long term. Yeah. Well, there's going to be way more opportunity than even what I said in that class, because now they have, like you said, lending and you don't need, a, 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 you don't need a lot of money. You can get in a lending pool. And that platform just grabs everyone's money and lends it out to these real other business people. And this, you know, uh, it's going to be backed by real collateral assets. So you're looking at, I think they were just talking about a, a, a jet, uh, a, a plane jet that is going to be as collateral. And then they're going to do a 6% loan. I don't know what it appraised for, but if you had put some Ethereum or whatever coin that they were accepting into the pool, and you make your percentage just off of holding that. And that's, uh, and that's the beauty. And they pay you, I believe, I don't know if it's daily. I didn't get too detailed into it because I personally don't want to do it yet. I, I don't want to be the guinea pig of anything. And I don't want to be the late to the party either. But now you can have the option to be, uh, you know, the long-term investor, which I would say you, Hunter, are the long-term hodler, the, the holder that, you know, hey, I want to buy, like people buy gold and then I just want to forget about it. And then let's say when I wake up, hey, I made a really nice return. Then you have these uh, swing traders kind of like, you know, they trade, you know, weekly, daily sometimes, but these are more middle term. And then you got your daily traders. Yeah, these traders are more like option traders, leverage traders. Uh, wow, I mean, you got to be glued to the seat 24 and I've done some of that, and it's actually really, really, really tough uh, to the point where, like I said, I don't want to put, I don't want to be just going all in on just one thing. Mm -hmm. So I became more of a macro trader where I do things on a weekly basis, but I, I zoom out on a monthly basis. So I look at everything from a monthly perspective, like even the markets. I got to the point where I can chart a market. I can, I, I look at the real estate market through a chart, and it's pretty cool because that kind of paved the way for that. So for people out there that are getting new into it, just, just be the guy that's trying to just dabble down a little bit and hold something. And then as you, and here's another thing, if people want to accumulate wealth through that, uh, they can do something called DCA, dollar cost, uh, dollar cost average, I'm sorry. And what that is, is basically you're accumulating, uh, but you have to pay attention to the market a little more regularly, but you're only buying every time it's dipping, especially where the market can drop 50%. So you can set up alarms on your phone and just have it to the point where, um, you know, I don't know if Coinbase is doing it. I don't have that. I don't like them, but it's the easiest one to use. And I believe you can set an alarm on the price that you want it to hit and top or bottom, let's say it got 50% below what you've been already watching for quite some time. Let's say right now Bitcoin's at ten thousand, well eleven thousand, but it, it goes back to like let's say five. That's more than fifty percent. Who wouldn't want a fifty percent discount? That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So, dollar cost averaging is basically buying every chance from the bottom, because people don't realize once it goes back to and it's always going to go back to its previous drop price. 
you made a hundred percent return of investment because you're buying from the way down and you're holding it to the way up. So what about the one that you didn't sell that you broke even because you didn't, you didn't lose any money. So now you made a hundred percent return on the new second purchase or the third purchase or the fourth purchase. So technically you never lose. And let's say you made one bad move where I bought today, it dipped tomorrow, 20%. And you know, I'm like, crap, I'm 20% in a, in a crap hole now. Uh, what do I do? That's the beauty about dollar cost averaging. You're averaging every dip that when you buy the next dip, now you're back in profit, but it, it basically covered your last wound that you had on your last move. So you're always going to at least get to a point where you break even and profit. And right now we just started the bull market, the, the, uh, the, the crypto based on charts and what we have, we have another at least a year in this run at least but we're i'm looking at this market this bull market should end now again not financial advice this is based on my macro charts this is based on a couple of models that i've been looking at very credible and it's been 100 percent accurate so far but i say by early 2022 we should start seeing a pop well you know i'm looking at some of this stuff that they're talking about this new news and some stuff you sent me about the hash cash consultants and has collaborated with the, gold, the global real estate companies and aims to help the same with their advanced real estate tokenization platforms to facilitate fractional property ownership and investments. What do you think about that? What about the fractional? That doesn't mean that's for investors though. That's not for a regular homeowner living well, in a home. No, they, they, they will we have yet to see these new regulations uh, that's going to be more transparent to the public because everything should be public, you know, record knowledge. But at the same time, uh, I only saw a few. I didn't see the real estate sector yet, but I can tell you right now, there's definitely regulations passed. Um, the fractional ownership, this model is not new. I mean, some people yeah. have been, yeah, you look at timeshare, that's a fractional ownership, but the difference is you're owning only a piece of time. You're not really owning the actual land and property. This one's going to be different and this one's going to be applied. So yeah, uh, you know, Bob and, you know, Mary can actually tokenize. You don't have to, there's going to be some people like, I don't want this, you know, and some people are going to say, yeah, sure. Why not? Now I can still live in my house, but liquidate just a little bit of it and get that. And then, you know, you can buy it back. That's another beauty of that. You can probably buy back your own shares. I mean, Tesla's done it, you know, uh, other, other Wall Streets have done and bought back their shares. You know, there, there's going to be very, all I have to say is it's going to be exciting because it's going to be so much opportunity for something like this. And I even thought of Ethereum. I'm like, okay, let's say you want to lend, you know, and you decided to fractional, uh, fractional ownership your property. I mean, you're looking at, I mean, possibility of, you know, I mean, you can mix and match like this. I mean, you can really play the monopoly game where I'm like, I'm just going to sell, they appreciate it so much. I'm just going to sell like 10 tokens of my property. And then now I'm going to get that second property, you know, put that down payment, get the DeFi lending, the crypto lending on that one, then tokenize that, appreciate it, sell a couple of tokens from there. And then I'm hopping, hopping. And next, you know, I got 10 properties with good cash flow and good equity. You that, know? Sounds like what, that sounds like what Debbie and I have done for the last 20 years. Take a, little bit of, take a little of the crypto out of what we got and put it in something else and watch it grow, right? And when it grows, take a little bit more out. But like you yeah. said, don't, don't go all in. Don't put all your money in one pile. Don't, uh, I mean, I remember uh, coaches were telling me, you know, and, and, and you heard it, you know, leverage everything you got, leverage everything you got. You know, I guess when you're young, you know, you could possibly do that. But when shit hits the fan like this here has hit, I mean, we, we did some leveraging in 2004 you know, when the market was really, really hot. And luckily we had a lot of staying power and because, you know, we had, we had 10 one arms and stuff like that. And we, we, we said at the time, well, we know we're not going to hold this 10 years. There's no way we're going to keep this property 10 years. Well, we still have the property today. I mean, so now I mean, we're, now we're fractionizing it out on Airbnb. So that's what we're doing. We're Airbnb in it, you know, yeah. there's keep paying. So, I mean, it's almost paid for. So that's a good news, but you know, it's just a lot of different things you can do with this new venture, just like this COVID. Nobody really knows what's going on. It's kind of a lot of stuff being made up as we go. The crypto, though, on the other hand, 
It's had a lot of study. It had a lot of good publicity. It's got a lot of bad publicity. It's it's just like it's like you said. It's like the internet. You know, yeah. it's it's just like the internet when the internet was coming. And look look at YK two. You know, twenty. You know, to the year two thousand. Right. Remember when everything was going to go. All everything was going to shut down. And I remember camping in in Georgia with my daughter and my my wife. We were at Stone Mountain, Georgia freezing our butts off watching the tv camp we were the only tent in the campground it's 34 degrees and i said hey man this is good for you this is good for us you know and my daughter's complaining about oh everything's going to go to hell in a handbag you know at 12 midnight tonight so we stayed up till midnight tonight to see if the tv worked you know and all that stuff so it's just crazy the media and what the media can drive and and just do oh. you know so you think about those things you know right right well, I, I do pay attention to what the media is today, but I, I really dig into technology news right now more than ever because it's relating to the solution to what people are wanting. And let's say, for example, there's a lot of people that barely want to step out of their own homes. And uh, I mean, right now, real estate is in a whole different dynamic right now. Uh, like I said, you guys are killing it. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people didn't expect where, okay, there's lower inventory, meaning high demand you know you're going to have uh right now you got millennials buying left and right and people don't realize that they're the ones who adopted easier to the remote working mm. so though that money is still there those fha buyers are still there uh i even did one uh you know i actually helped uh facilitate the actual deal and what happened was these millennials were like well we understand that there's a virus but i still want a home you know, we need a home, we need a place to live. And their lease was ending. And it's to the point where, you know, again, they're not out of a job, they're working from home. A lot of these people there are proof to buy real estate, financially doing well, work from home now. And that's what and just focus a lot into that where we're moving towards zoom stocks went up, everything's becoming remote. So you're going to start looking at real estate transactions, that are going to be more remote where it, it and we're looking at speed savings you name it and everything and that's what te the technology today is focusing on right now is to make things contactless i mean mcdonald's is advertising left and right if you order with a contactless app today you know your food will be ready in no time that's what they say and everyone is preaching this because we know that we're heading towards this and what better i mean you got politicians there uh, and people from the World Economic Forum saying you can't let a good crisis go to waste. And, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I hate to say it, but it's, it's true. It's, a, it's, it's an opportunity to bring on something that is going to potentially actually benefit a lot of people. Some people may not like it, but you got to change with the times. You can't sit there and just let things change and you decided, hey, I'm just going to keep it old school. Old school is fine and all, but you know, when the times are changing, you know, you're going to be left in the rat race. You know, you're going to be left in the maze where everyone else is out and free and prospering from, you know, new fortune, new wealth, new opportunities. And that's, and that's what I'm, I've been telling you. That's why I sent you that text. I'm like, Hey, look, just take a look at this. Not right. It's not happening right now. Yeah. They're doing right now. Those are recent articles uh, from Yahoo finance, but it's happening where the real estate market, the derivatives market, wall street, everything is going to get tokenized it's going to get blockchain and ai is, is going to come right after that it's going to be everywhere right after that because the best way for ai to function is going to be through blockchain right so right rather everyone wants to say oh no ai is a little crazy and you know they're gonna be robots that take over the world i mean Look, we, we can believe what we want to believe, but at the end of the day, uh, I'm also an opportunist. So I look right. at it from where, look, I, I don't have any control of what technology is going to do, and I can't stop it. You know, I'm not going to be that guy, but I'm not going to look at it from a point of view. Well, how can I better my family? How can I, you know, have my, you know, I don't have any kids, but, you know, I do, I do plan ahead. And I'm like, I want to make sure I leave something behind, you know, for friends and family and whatever it is that I, the people that I care about, you know, protect the wealth. You know, you work so hard. It's a, you know, it's, you know, why would you want to evaporate? Look what happened to the taxi drivers, you know, and uh, they, they went out of business, you know, and a lot of things are going to keep doing that. Look at a lot of hotels, you know, Airbnb came in, 
and they disrupted a lot. And I can tell you right now, there's going to be a whole lot of disruption. Guarantee you, the next year to two, you're yeah. going to see. Guaranteed. I, I firmly will put all my bitcoins. <laughs> uh, I will. Well, so, so what do you think? So, so when you say that, uh, there's a big shift. There's a big change. Yep. You know, just like in uh, uh, the dynamics of, of the things that are going on around the world. There's a lot of people on there watching. They're post posting their notes on there about some of the things. Brad Carter, one of our uh, newer partners on there. And uh, they're not really asking questions. They're just posting some things. And and what do you think, though, Willie, uh, about the real estate market? What do you, what do you think that's going to do uh, with this? I know, you know, you dabble. I know you're watching it. I know you're looking yeah. at it. I just want to get your 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 side view or your perspective of what you think i know you said it's going to be tough i know the fourth quarter next year is going to be the first quarter is going to be a rough road especially the free money quits coming if the government quits printing money quits giving people money to the pay their i heard i heard i heard in michigan they're not giving the people the money they're giving the landlords the money to pay for the rent so i think that's a perfect example of what should be doing they should take from that but what do you think about the real estate industry and the market just in your eyes, you're 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 pretty knowledgeable about things, and you, you're pretty humble about it as well. But, yeah, I preserve judgment as much as possible because you know we're living in a moment where uh, my my advice and it's it's worked for me. I can't speak for everybody, but I can say that what's worked for me is as you're learning and watching anything, uh, look at it from just hey, look, it's just data. You're extracting data, and then you are seeing how it's going to be applied to your strategy and your end game. Everybody should have some kind of strategy and a backup plan. And the way I look at things is, you know, real estate, there's, there's two sides going on right now. And the side that played out more, it happens to be exactly what you're doing. You got 29 deals and that's because there's really not a lot of inventory. So they're going to sell like hotcakes right now. You got these millennials and good amount of remote workers that are still buying. And you got a lot of people that are not wanting to sell and put it up on the market because of the fear. I mean, everyone coming in your house with masks, uh, germs and COVID, you know, a lot of things like that uh, is scaring people. So the market is going to unfold because this September, uh, I think there's uh, this company, it's called COVID Pass. COVID Pass is going to be on the phone and it's a QR. Uh, supposedly they're gonna use like blood or DNA and anyone that has like antibodies or has been tested and you came out negative and you have positive on antibodies. So you're basically immune six months to a year rather than having swaps and everything. And you know, it, it kind of delays your, you can miss your flight just cause you're busy getting tested before. I have friends that miss their flight all the time now uh, and they're, you know, they do it for business and not traveling for fun. But at the end of the day, with a QR code, you're just sitting your phone and then it gets scanned and they're like, okay, go ahead. This will allow you to get into stadiums, arenas, entertainment centers. The NBA right now is crowdless. We're watching things right now on TV that is, there's no audience. This is crazy time. We're living in a movie, but this September happens to be a special month because they're releasing so many products. Uh, at least to trial and test pilots. So they're going to let a few people within the, uh, like beta testing, testing uh, the public, and they're going to see how it runs and functional. And once we get these things, we're going to find out the real numbers that, in my opinion, right now are just delayed and they're dragging because, you know, forbearance in 2008 was like a 4.4% forbearance. And then real estate, unlike Wall Street, it took forever to see the real prices drop. So that took like what, like depending, I mean, if we're in Florida, but other states, I mean, it, it took a year and a half to finally see the bottom of that market. And because real estate is so slow, the forbearance supposedly, this was like in April, it's like nine, over 9%. Yeah. So that's more. And I look at forbearance, that's a huge band-aid. But this band-aid is bigger than the previous one. Now, the only difference is that we have the feds that are giving everyone all this money, then the landlords kind of get it and kind of not get any for state. So you're, you're seeing randomness. I mean, government's not doing a great job right now. Uh, it's it's, it's kind of like dead people receiving stimulus too. So the way I look at it is once we start getting a push and reopening officially, getting these new technology apps that everyone's going to, because, you know, I'm going to have that app. I don't want this restriction. I want to get on a plane 
and I want to go fast. I don't want to sit there and just, you know, get swabbed left and right. You know, it, you know, that's going to feel very uncomfortable. And people are like, Hey, sorry, you tested positive for COVID. Now you can't, you have to cancel all your flights and your plans. And they're not getting a lot. They're not, there's not refunds going on for that right now, especially at cruise lines and stuff like that. So you don't know the real numbers of the real estate market until we finally get something like that going. But we, people are saying theoretically, I follow a good amount of other real estate guys too that are active in other states and they're telling me that, hey, it could be uh, 20% or 10%, something minuscule because the government is just going to pump up more money to the point where they're going to actually catch the dropping knife. Mm -hmm. uh, some people will disagree and it has a lot to do with the monetary system and the Federal Reserve and the whole dollar and currency. Some people say dollar is king. Some people say dollar is not going anywhere. So these are things that I don't like to be, I like to call it tribalism, where you're picking one side because you feel so proud about it. And that's what's happening right now today on social media, where people want to act like they're experts. I have my judgment reserved because I'm not an expert. And at the same time, I look at things as, hey, look, I just want to make sure that if I could be wrong, I want to be right. It's going to affect me financially, too. So I look at everything with an open mind. So I gave you all scenarios, basically, just look right on the table that either one can play out. But as an opportunist, and I got that word opportunist more from uh, Frank McKinney. He's a real estate opportunist. Hey, yeah, you know Frank McKinney. <laughs> I, I've been with this amazing guy. You know, sacrifice today for a better tomorrow. I love that one. I, yeah. I, that's that stuck with me forever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man. So like, that's why I taught you. That's what I taught you back in 2006. Sacrifice today for a better tomorrow. And look at there. <laughs> you know, people people want to come and do what we do, including people want to come do what you do and what I do. And they come in this office and they see the deals. 29 deals and you know, since March, into March, you know, after the COVID was announced, full blood, blown. I mean, we're just killing it. We got a deal closing today. We got a couple's listings we're doing here soon. We have this stuff really happening. And yeah. I'm like, you know, I know this isn't going to happen. For, I know this isn't going to last forever. I know that. I, yeah. I know. We know. You know, it isn't. I hope it does. Like you said earlier, you know, I hope it does. But, you know, you know, it ain't going to happen because things are, they, things are happening. Nobody knows what's going on. There's too many job losses, too much, too much negative impact from the COVID. To, to really keep going the way it is. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're over the top of the hour. And I said, I'd, I'd, I'd grab an hour from you, man. And I, and I, I do. I appreciate all your information, hey, all but your like you, excitement the, about what you do. Go ahead. The opportunity, though. Like, yeah. as much as a lot of things that's going on today, you know, just to end, you know, this call with a higher note, you know, I want to tell people, look, it we may not get another opportunity like this. I remember the great recession, what happened in 08. Uh, I knew a lot of people that had a real estate license. No one renewed. I mean, a lot of people got out of that business, got out of the game. And the reason why is because it was all this fear mongering stuff that you heard the media made it really, really bad. It was bad. Yeah. I'm not sure. But for every time you see a down market, these are market cycles, man, regardless of what was the catalyst that helped pop, Let's say the virus helped pop, you know, the inflated thing. That was it. But it's opportunity. And let's say even yourself, let's say you, you wanted to last as long as you want. Don't tell me you're not going to make even more money when it's going down. Yeah. Because yeah. you're going to be buying more. Yeah. So that's the key. You know, uh, being in the right place, being at the right time, having the right knowledge. You know, knowledge is power. But knowledge is only power. But you have to you have to act on it. You have to use it. You have to know what to do with it. You have to know which knowledge goes which where and, and things like that. So it's just a, uh, it's just good to have people like you in our lives. Uh, uh, we appreciate, you know, you know, our whole office staff, you know, Pam, you know, you've been there for everybody. You know, we love, we love you as well. And, you know, you've really brought a lot of shine in our office, a lot of deals in our office and a lot of good excitement and just being good friends and being able to work together in different areas and different deals and things that we've done in the past. It's just been a lot of fun. You're a great guy. You're fun to work with. And uh, uh, these are just kind of people that I surround myself with right here, you know. And that's what I want to say on this, you know, for you guys that are watching, you know, Willie's really humble and it, to his uh, credentials to what he does, you know. I mean, he really, he really is. And, and uh, you know, he's got a great life. He's got a great lifestyle. 
you know, and, and, uh, he, you know, like I said, he, he's watching what's happening. Debbie and I love to travel. They want to travel. Uh, we haven't got the QR code or nothing like that yet. So maybe we'll have to get it. I don't know if it's a government thing or whatever it's going to be, but you know, you just got to hang in there. You got to follow the right people. And that's the thing. You have to follow the right people. If you're not following the right people, uh, I mean, it brings me back to my first six months in the real estate. I was following a couple and, and I was following them. I was going to lunch with them. I was listening. I was going to dinners. I was going to meetings. I was doing this. And finally, I got the, the gumption to ask them. I said, well, how many deals have you done? And they said, oh, we haven't done any deals yet. We're still planning on it, working. I said, holy crap. I've spent six months of my life listening and, and involving myself with this. And it's part of the growing and learning. Yeah. But I decided, look, I can't hang with these people no more. I have to go somewhere to get fed. Like you talked about earlier. You know, your mind feed, you know, that's the way you are. And that's what we have to do. And that's what we do every day here. We're always learning different things. I mean, we got some big stuff opening up, coming up. I have a training with all of our, our new students that come on board. You know, we talked about 29 deals in the last month. We've got over 20 new partners that signed up with us uh, wow. in the last 30 days. You know, it's wow. like, wow, yeah, it, it's amazing. It's made 45 days, but it's amazing. And then we're all doing our... Our PowerPoint uh, coming up on the 13th of this month. I got a big event we're doing with them, all on Zoom, all private. And uh, but it's a mastermind of people all over the country doing real estate, doing business, short sales. It does, you know, short sales is what we teach. That's our niche, and you know, we know how to do all other kinds of you know sub twos and all the other stuff as well. But it, it, it's just good to know that I can reach out any given time to talk to you, text you, call you and get information that I may not be up on. I need to know more about, or you can call us and, you know, pick our brains on some of the new stuff going, cause you're not playing as much in the real estate as you used to, but still, I know your eyes on it. I know yeah. your eyes on it. I know, I know, because it is the cow. I still did a deal this year, but, but uh, I'm not as aggressive because I'm seeing opportunity in other places right now where I don't want to like, just let my palm out of that yet, mm -hmm. you know? As like you said, uh, and like we talked about earlier, it's a full circle. So yeah. uh, what I'm dabbling with more now is going to be, I'm, I'm, you know, let's put it this way. Let's say I reach a certain amount of capital from crypto. Okay. I'm buying a lot more property, like a lot more. And let's say if I, it's, no one's perfect. No one can time the market perfectly, but let's just say, I'm blessed to get to that right position. Like I'm talking about timing wise and the market dips, let's say the most 20%, even if I bought up at 18%, still winning. And, yeah. uh, and, and I, I recommend everybody look at it as like a monopoly game where you're just trying to, you know, increase and build your portfolio. You know, you don't want to just go in there and say, Hey, I'm just trying to make money and just chase money. You're, you're chasing a, a certain specific lifestyle and wealth. You know, if you're just looking at dollar amount, uh, you might get stuck somewhere. And before you know it, you get burnt out and you realize money was not really the motivating factor. You know, you got to admit, you're not doing it right now just for money. No, you know? no, you know? no, no, we never have. It's all about, you know, service. It's all about service, servicing others, giving people what they need, giving people what they want. And in return, we're, we're blessed from what we've been able to do. Well, I got to get out of here. I got another call to do, man. Willie, I really appreciate you coming out on Friday. Like I said, Everybody out there uh, on the YouTube space, on the uh, social media space, thank you for joining today. It's Foreclosure Friday. Uh, go out there and get some deals done. Go out there and look at some crypto. Uh, do whatever gets you excited. Do what you love to do. And do you can see his passion. You can see Willie's passion and what he's doing. He loves doing what he's doing. I love, and, really, love crypto. I love blockchain. I, you know, I, I, I love opportunity. You know what I mean? Right. There's, and there's going to be a lot of it, guys, a lot of it. So just just, just stay motivated, uh, block out the noise, block out the fear. Uh, I suggest – Get a coach. Yeah. Might want to get a coach. Don't do it alone, you know. Yeah. Don't do it alone. Yeah. That's the thing. I never did anything alone, you know what I mean? I, I definitely – I mean, it started with Hunter, and, and at the end of the day, even with crypto, I, I don't have a coach, but I'm still aggressively learning from others that are smarter you're becoming, than me. You're becoming the coach. <laughs> yeah, happens. but then I'm. We gotta get off here, man. I'll see you later. This guy will teach all day long if I let him keep talking. See you later, buddy. <laughs> hey, this is Hunter Pascal.
Foreclosure Friday, and I'm your man. Let's have some fun this weekend. Get some deals. Talk to you then.